that in our engine um, overhaul, engine rebuild, that we, we used a, a Watts clutch and there was a reason for doing that and we felt that we needed to maybe add to that. So what I've got here, is, uh, what I have in front of me is an early, early uh, uh, brake drum and I want to point out why we use the Watts clutch. If you'll, if you'll notice, we have some rough edges where the steel disc of the clutch have wore in to the surface. And if these get real deep, such as these here, and this is even worse, you can really see it, that will interfere with the operation of the clutch. In other words, it may become very difficult to get a good free neutral. So if, I, if my only selection is this drum, I would certainly want to use a watched clutch. However, this is December of 2014. Uh, watched clutches are no longer being made, but it's our understanding that the gentleman that's uh, involved in that project is testing some new materials, and hopefully we will have a watched clutch back on the marketplace. Uh, it, it keeps us from buying a new drum or trying to find a new drum. But if you have a clutch, a brake drum, that isn't very worn, just has some ridges, you can take a four corner file and just knock off the high ridges where the clutch discs uh, run in. And smooth those down to the point where we just don't have as much serration, I guess it would be a good call for it. By filing down the lug, uh, you're able to get rid of some of the serrations to where the clutch has an opportunity to be able to move freely. So when it's engaged, all the clutch discs is, is, has pressure on it, and when it's released, they need to be free enough where things will spree, uh, spin so you have a good neutral. So uh, if I had a decent drum, I would go around here and file down all of these edges uh, so I could, I could stand a chance to get a good Ford. Henry Ford, as he supplied our transmission, used a series of 25 steel discs. There are 13 large discs and 12 small disc. The small disc is what comes in contact with what I call the clutch basket and the large disc makes contact with through the lugs on the brake drum. And these are simply uh, installed 25 of them alternating the large one to a small one uh, to, to, yeah, to the smaller one. And what I would look for is I would examine each disc individually I'm looking to see that we've got good uh, sharp notches in it that's going to come in contact with the brake drum. I don't want to see any brakes, cracks, so I make sure that I indeed have a, a, a good disc. The first disc that goes in place would be a large one. I would drop a little bit of oil on the brake drum and place the first disc in. The next disc that goes in would be our small one. There's 12 of them. Uh, again, I would look for cracks on, on the surface. I would want to find good sharp edges, no, no jagged edges, nothing curled up. If there's a little bit of curling on it, you can knock that down, but we want to have 12 of these that are in good shape. They do reproduce these things, but there's just tons of these things out and around. So you should be able to come up with a, a 
use set and, and be able to, to utilize them. But I would continue building this clutch pack up with a little oil and alternating between the large one that goes out to the makes contact with the brake drum and a small one that goes makes contact with what I call the clutch basket. And I continue to build that up until I have all 25 of them installed. And then the next piece, of course, would be the pressure ring, then mounting the drive plate, and it would continue on with what we did on the transmission build in our engine uh, restoration uh, presentation.